Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark. I'm with Steve. How you doing? We're good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're talking about Final Cut Pro 10, the new features in the 10.2 update, and uh, Steve's going to go over my favorite thing. Uh, 3D text. 3D, 3D text. 3D text. Yeah. You now, Apple gave us a real gift with this update. In fact, no one expected it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like... It's just What's on up. anybody's list of, like, could you fix this? Could you fix that? Ta-da! 3D yeah. text. Well, what's amazing is they, they did it right. It's, yeah, it's not a did. hokey, you know, implementation. No. It's it's gorgeous. The text, the photorealistic rendering of the lights, the textures, the shadows. It, and the could, performance. And the performance. I mean, yeah. you could play this back in real time. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Um, I, I would put this title in, in any television show title opener or, or feature film. It's, they're, they're that good. Yeah. Right. That is, so what I want to do is, is walk through th some of the 3D text attributes. But okay. I want to cover everything. There's a lot of stuff to cover. We can yeah. do that over the next series hours. hours. So what I want to really focus on is material. Okay. Okay. Material is the physical, the physicality of your text and mm -hmm. what, you, what you're putting on it. You know, okay. whether it's wood, stone, metal, what have you. So let's look at that. So... Here I have in the timeline a 2D text object, and I, I like to start with a 2D text object because I just want to show you how easy it is to convert to 3D. Mm -hmm. It's just a simple check in this box. Boop, 3D text, that's it. So, well, what happened? Well, if you go over here to the viewer and click, you'll now have on-screen controls. Okay, and these on-screen controls will allow you to move the text in essentially three planes, X, Y, and Z planes. And I'm just gonna move this a little bit. You can also rotate them along those planes as well. Um, you, and the reason I'm doing this, you can see it's truly a 3D uh, object here as I move mm -hmm. it. Now, I like to rotate the text into what I call a hero angle. I call this the hero angle because you it's can very dramatic. Yes, yeah, because it's dramatic. You can see some of the changes you're making to the text. Mm -hmm. So back in the inspector, uh, you'll notice that the 3D attributes, the way it looks, is broken into three sections. How you can control it: 3D text. Um, you have this area called lighting and then material, mm -hmm. okay? In the 3D text section, um, you can play with the depth and the, uh, the bevel. Um, not, again, not so worried about that. I want to talk about material, so I'm going to go ahead and hide that. And that's another nice feature. You can hide the areas that yeah. you're, you know, Because there's a deal lot with. of stuff in here. It's nice to collapse things you're not focused on. Exactly. What I want to focus on is the material. This is generally where I start because you want to skin your text first. You want to choose a material, mm -hmm. right? And the materials are found in this little button. I call this button a chiclet because it looks like a piece of gum yeah. or a breath mint. Yeah. Uh, but it's really a material button. And when you click on it, you'll have all these so materials. These preset materials. Now, these are all ones that I've saved ahead of time, so just ignore those. So you've created your own preset created materials. Created my own. Okay. In fact, let me just go ahead and throw one on there just to see it. Just like, just like that. I've got this metal, so that's one of my saving nice. materials. We'll come back to that. Okay. But I want to go in here and uh, choose a material. No, they're category. These are all built in. They're built in. You yeah. know, con concrete, grunge, metal. I generally like to start with metal because it's just, it just looks so spectacular when you good. have the environment. So I'm going to go ahead and choose gold. Nice gold. Okay, so I have this gold material applied to the text, and just so you see this. It's applied to all surfaces, not just the front. It's a true yeah. 3D object that's reflecting. You can see it reflecting light. It's yeah, reflecting it's light. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just gorgeous, okay? So you got this material, and I, want, I don't want you to think that a material is just one thing, like gold or wood. Yeah. Materials are comprised of multiple layers, and I'm going to go over here and, and show you this. See here, right now it says that this is a substance. It's got a metal gold surface. So this whole thing is a layer uh, called a substance layer. It gets layer. a layer, right. Mm -hmm. And a material can be comprised of many layers, not just okay. one. Mm -hmm. But there has to be at least one layer, and I'll show you why. I could select that layer, and I hit delete. It says, well, I don't know. It goes into a <laughs> yeah. black void. So I have to have at least one layer. Okay. 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 So what I'm going to do is start with a substance. Substance is your base layer. That's yeah. where you want to begin. So what the thing's made yeah, out of. Yeah, what is it made out of? So I'm going to choose substance. I'm going to go back to, um, I'm going to choose metal. So I'm back to where I started. But notice now I can choose a type. And okay. this will pop up. I can choose brass, chrome, what have, what have you. I'm going to go ahead and choose a nice cold steel. I can I can play with the shininess how much shiny, or mat, matness of the of the. Uh, of the text, yeah, great. But I really wanted to talk about the layers that you brought up. So you start with a substance, and then you start adding layers to it. It's like a, almost if, like if a you little, want. It's like if you want, you could be done right now. Be this done. is beautiful, exactly. Uh -huh. But this is where it gets. This is where your three titles really take on new characteristics, where you can do stuff that doesn't make them look so canned. So we're going into the rabbit hole. We're going into the rabbit hole. <laughs> it's really it's it's a lot of fun. So you have this layer, and we'll go over here and. Like the real world, you start with a substance like wood, paint, metal, and then you decide what you want to do, do to it. Like you okay. may want to paint it. Uh -huh. And then 
after you paint it, you might want to add a finish to it. And then after the finish, then over time, it gets distressed and aged. Now, you, you could apply these layers in this order, but they don't necessarily have to be applied in this mm-hmm. order. It's mm-hmm. just kind of a way of thinking about how you would approach kind of building, layering. Building and, from the inside exactly, out. Exactly, exactly. Uh-huh. So, so right now I have this, this base uh, steel layer here. And let's say I want to now add a finish. So I'm going to add an enamel finish to this, okay? So now a new... And it's got shinier. Yeah, it's got shinier, shinier, shinier now. In fact, it's got an enamel kind of reflecting off the letters there. It's uh-huh. really neat, right? And I can play with the shininess here. Um, excuse me, the reflectivity, right? You're just using the slider. Or the amount of glossiness, okay? Yep. You can play with the glossiness. And like, hmm, that looks good, but maybe let's try polish. What does polish look like? And you get a yeah, completely, completely different. different look. It's a really yeah. super polished Very surface. It's dark, but right. might be looking at a lighter background or it makes the high, the corners and edges really pop. Exactly. Uh-huh. So you have a lot of control here. And then uh, maybe I want to, you know, I, you know, it's a little bit chill. I want to distress it out a little bit. So I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to go up here and say, you know, let's add a distress layer. Let's add some, no, no, no. Let's add some dirt. Let's make it dirty. Okay, so I've just added a dirt layer. Oh, wow, you can you see sure like, yeah. so now they, the text has got this kind of grungy dirt. It's still got that base shininess to it. You can yeah. see it reflecting, but but it's got this, I don't know, it's almost like it's oxidized in the, yeah. you know, left, out, left outside like a uh-huh. kid's bike. Right, sorry. <laughs> These are, this is for the right. old, this is the old <laughs> MacBreak episodes. Right, <laughs> the very old MacBreak. <laughs> but what's really nice is now you can apply what's different, what's called texture map. So you can go up here and say, maybe I so, want to, Different kinds of kinds dirt. Of, kind, different kind of dirt, all kind of dirt. So you get this dirt, you can play the opacity of the dirt, but this is what's really cool. If you open up placement and you make sure uh, you could choose object or glyph, you can you can change the, the, that texture over the entire surface of the text or just on individual glyphs. Uh-huh. Right. But point is, if I use these positions, notice I'm dragging, I can move that texture around yeah, the text. change how it's mapped. And it's really nice because if you have a long word and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to give it the impression that it's yeah. kind of like the same Or there's a pattern. certain part you want to move a scratch over or something, you can be very precise. Right, exactly. So you have a lot of control here um, with these layers. And so, and, and, it, and because they're layers, you can then turn them on and off very easily, right? See, and, and you, can, you can test things out by just toggling on, on and off, it's really great. Now, we said, or I said earlier, that a material is kind of the sum total of all your layers. So notice as I'm turning these off, watch this little button, the little chiclet. Yeah. It changes to indicate that it's new reflecting that okay. new layer state. So it's reflecting exactly what we see in the viewer. Exactly. Uh-huh. So, I, I'm, so I want to save this as a material. Yeah, you've built something you like and you want to save it. So exactly. Save a, a new material preset. Right. So when you go up here to the chiclet, you can choose save material. Uh-huh. And you get a little dialogue that comes up and I call this... Uh, MBS dirty, the dirty Mac steel. Break. Yeah. This dirty. is late late night Mac break. Yeah, <laughs> dirty steel, right? And I click save, and I've got this dirty steel now. And well, it, can we see it? Oh, yeah. the pop up menu oh, now. Oh yeah, it's it's actually in there. Let's see. There it is, MBS dirty steel. Oop, there it is, MBS. Great. Dirty so you could steel. apply that preset to any other text in any other project. Any other project. In fact, I worked on some Redwood. I. You know, there's our, you know, Redwood edition of Mac Break. Huh. And now we have... Mac Break, Redwood edition. Yeah, Redwood edition. But, <laughs> but what's nice about this, you can see that this material, as I scroll down here, is, is really comprised of some scratches and some wood. So this, uh, there's some scratches on this particular surface. In fact, I'm, I'm going to zoom in just so you can see this here. You've got some realistic sh- uh, scratches being um, rendered into the surface mm-hmm. there. Sure do. And uh, what I'll do is, in this case, i got some enamel. I'll go ahead and turn the enamel finish on. And notice it gets oh, really shiny. Nice. It's, it's almost like the like a flooring company didn't bother to yeah. sand out the, the scratches before they enameled they over the wood, it, yeah. right? Yeah. But what's really great, Mark, is that at any point you could change the order. So you could say, you know, I really want the scratches after, after the enamel. So I just enameled my floor and now my kids ran their bike around the scratched top. It. Oh, wow. And scratched it. Oh, wow. Now that it's yeah. all scratched up. It's yeah, enameled so, and scratched. Beautiful. Yeah. So absolutely beautiful. So this is, you know, again, Apple gave us a tremendous tool um, with this 3D, yep. um, with this. Through the title tool, we can we can create some really great stuff. And again, we don't have a lot of time to go through all the different permutations of, of the materials. You can, I'm only I'm only uh, skinning of uh, the surface on the front and back, but you can do multiple surfaces. Right, multiple and, break it up into multiple surfaces and apply. Which we'll look at in another okay. episode. Great. So. So well, there this, you have it. There's your introduction to materials. And, fantastic. And yeah. it's, there must be millions of combinations once you look at all the different parameters that you can move around. So uh, I don't think you're going to see repeating options of this out there 
soon because you can make it so customized. So customized. Great. Steve, great. That's a great introduction. So thanks. I hope you guys got something out of that. Uh, if you haven't gotten into the 3D text, you should definitely check it out. Steve has a training on what's new in, in Final Cut Pro 10.2, which includes, of course, all the 3D text and a bunch of other features. This is not all that's in there, so check that out. And also check out, we have a set of plugins that are specific to 3D text in Final Cut Pro 10 that take these features and really supercharge them, let you do even more. So check those out also at rippletraining.com. And uh, thanks again for watching MacBreak Studio.